Like Roche is my name. When I was four years old, when I started school, I didn't start. On the first day, I ran away from school because my first school was nuns. I never saw a nun in my life. She frightened me living in reality. <laughs> Second day, I went to school. My mother stayed until 10 o'clock to watch me. And when my mother was talking to the nun, I ran away again, up to my grandmother's house, which was two miles away. I was four, okay, I was four years of age. There was no traffic there. Everybody was safe. On the third day, my mother stayed again until 10 o'clock, and I ran again. And the mother superior was waiting at the back door. She was, to me, as four years old, she was a monster in black clothing with this little white triangle over her forehead. She brought me across to her class through an avenue lined with trees. I was four. She gave me a severe beating in front of her fifth and sixth class. I didn't stutter. For three months, I didn't speak. I didn't speak. And when I spoke, I stuttered severely. And for the next 40 years, I stuttered severely. I was speaking to you in October 1999. My name would have been Michael O'Shea. I can bring that back like that. At the age of four, I developed the mindset and mentality of a stutter, survival. I also learned great <coughs> skills, great skills of overcompensation. I knew I had to survive in the fluent speaker's world. I knew I had to prove myself. Transferred to another school at the age of seven, my parents got a new council house. All that I knew about the principal is he shouted. He lost his temper very easily. My teacher was out of school sick. We went into his class for three days. First day, he completely ignored me. The second day, he ignored me. The third day, he asked me a question and I couldn't say it. He asked me again, I couldn't say it. Spit it out, he said. Seven years of age. He had a one meter long stick, a brass ferrule on each end. Hold out your hand, he said. Shouted again. I held out my hand. He drew it back, instinct. I pulled it in. He pulled it again, held my hand, and hit me right there. The mark is still there to this day. As I speak to you now, I can see a small man, about five foot two, dressed in his uniform, summer or winter. The only time he changed in the winter is he didn't use the grey jumper. He used the suit and the shirt only. That instant, I knew I had to be very, very careful around people, adults, who stuttered. Because I stuttered. Why? Because if I stuttered, it would end up in physical pain. At the age of seven, 
you don't know what psychological pain was. At four, you don't know what trauma is. But I tell you this, whether you're four or seven, childhood trauma follows you for the rest of your life. The rest of your life, it can leave its mark. Why am I telling you this? The first thing for the child in school who stutters is the feeling of difference. Feeling of difference when the teacher asks them in the morning, reading out the roll call, and you're not answered. You're not asked your name. Teacher looks up, maybe over his or her glasses, marks you in. Never asked. <coughs> One shot. Simple answer. Never asked. Skipped over. Feeling of difference. That's what drives it. So if we can educate the teachers in that arena, if we can educate the lecturers in that arena, and see how powerful it is to address it there, we can stop the transfer from primary stuttering last from the time the child gets that feeling up to eight years of age where it goes to secondary stuttering where it transfers into psychological and physical response. We can give people who go into their teens a very good quality of life because they know there's help and support available because it starts in the schools by educating the teachers, by educating the lecturers and educating the parents. Michael O'Shea.